produce animal. Nothing. Nothing? There is nothing left to say. What about everything we've done so far? That man coming to the house? Talking to the world serpent? We've done so many amazing things. I just want to tell her about them. Don't you? What else would you say to her? I tell her that we're both okay. Not to worry about us. Atreus, I... I miss her too. You know this. I thought I knew very little. Tell me about that giant lady with the bow. She was called Skadi, Queen of the Hunt. Her father was Thiotsi, who could take the shape of any wild creature, and taught Skadi how to hunt them all. From the ribs of pack beasts, she fashioned second feet, allowing her to glide upon the snow so no animal could evade her. She became a huntress beyond compare, even to any god. Odin himself wanted her for his bride believing she would bear him strong sons. But she spurned his affections, and for that insult, Odin vowed revenge. It was put forth that the Aesir were plagued by an eagle who would steal the precious golden apples of Idun. Not even the finest archer among the gods could bring it down. Odin knew that Skadi could not resist the temptation to prove herself superior, and so she joined the hunt. Skadi tracked the eagle as it flew where she alone could glide, and loosed an arrow from her unerring bow. When she collected her quarry, she found no eagle at all, but her own father, poor Theotzi, slain by his own daughter. She was overcome with grief and shame, for there is nothing nature so reviles as a child who kills their parent. Skadi succumbed to her fate as winter's blanket fell holding her father as the mountain held her in an embrace to last eternity. Well, that was sad. Aye. There aren't many happy endings for the giants, I'm afraid. final bone. Yeah. We might as well return them to the spirit. Maybe he will keep his word. I know she's not coming back, okay? I know. I just... Never mind.
a piece of the language cipher. Good. wonder what became of him. Wait, Fafnir? Like, Fafnir's storeroom, Fafnir? Very one. But Sindri said he was a dwarf. He was. And now he's a dragon. Funny how life works, isn't it? He's chained up. Perhaps we should keep an eye out for binding shrines and free the poor bastard. Hi, lads. No friend of mine. This little scroat was a constant source of annoyance amongst Aesir and Vanyar alike. Why free him? Trust the recently liberated brother. No one deserves to be held captive like this. Read your little dwarf from Dragon. His penchant for stealing magical artifacts had something to do with it. He must have stolen a trinket from the wrong Banyan goddess. Yeah! <laughs> 
A lot's changed since we last crossed paths. I had legs. Oh, you wee little bugger. <laughs> I wonder why Boogie's bones are all over the place. Desecration, typically. Pieces of scattered corpse make for a piss poor soul. No hope for Valhalla or Helheim when your arm's on one beach and your head's on another. Why not ask the spirit? I'm sure he will be forthcoming with answers. Boy. Yes, sir. It's another one of those maps. Oh. 
heard you and Brock are kind of famous. Well, you're half right. Whatever did you hear? That you made Thor's hammer. Oh. Yes. We did do that. Mjolnir put us on the map. It was a legendary run. Gods and kings knew our brand. We really did make quite a team. So what happened? Oh, well, that's a long story. Things happened that made it difficult to... find that certain spark, you know? Inspiration is a fickle mistress. Huh? Oh, enough distractions. You see the mess I have to clean up around here? Ah, could it be? The Eight Thrones. Stop being coy, Ed. Do you know this place or not? Ah, Mimia, the smartest man alive. I know many things. Well, whatever this place is, it looks important. To who? There is little of value here.
a question. If Ymir was the first giant, where did he come from? In the beginning, there was Ganungagog, the great boy. There were no realms yet, only primordial forces. There was fire, and there was ice, and there in the void they met and produced... Water? More than water. The mystic lifeblood of something entirely new. From this water, Ymir took form and became a being of pure creation and chaos, mother and father to all that came after. Even the Aesir? Aye. Every god, man and beast came first from Ymir's flesh. Though it was the Aesir who thought themselves so superior that they should hold dominion over the rest of creation. It was Odin who took arms against his creator and spilled Ymir's lifeblood with his spear. A necessary evil, he would say, to bring order to the realms. From Ymir's torn flesh, Odin would fashion the realm of Midgard for his own. Called himself All-Father as if he was the creator and not the creator's destroyer. A small, covetous tyrant. Ymir? Huh? Oh, sorry, my boy. Ah, uh, you know, I think it best we just end it there, actually. We have collected the rest of your woman's corpse spirit. Show us this magic you have promised. Ah, my sweet Gulvik, whole again. Rise, dear Gulvik. Awaken, O oh powerful Gulvik! She says she'll honor our request. Eldifagno. And reunite us? In Okay, you're right. <laughs> I told you so. I told you so. You are naive, foolish boy. This is true as well. But do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. Take it as a lesson. Yes, sir. stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? You just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Hrunia, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Ace. A pretty story, but no. Hrunia, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hrungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there, 
I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Hrungnir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mjolnir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend.